Zoe Porphyrogenita Greek, Zoe life. Medieval Greek, Zoe, c. 978 June 1050 reigned as Byzantine Empress alongside her sister Theodora from 10 April 1042 to June 1050. She was also enthroned as Empress Consort to a series of co-rulers between 1028 and 1042. Zoe was born to a nominal co-emperor, Constantine VIII, but lived a life of relative obscurity until the age of 47. Her uncle Basil II then died, leaving the Byzantine throne entirely to her father. As he had no sons, Constantine hoped to continue the dynasty by marrying off one of his daughters. Zoe, aged 50, was married to Romanos III Argyros, who became emperor three days later on her father's death. The marriage was troubled and after five years Romanos was found dead in his bath. His death has been variously attributed to Zoe or her young lover. They were married on the same day as the murder, and he was crowned emperor as Michael IV on the following day. Seven years later, Zoe was persuaded to adopt her dying husband's nephew, also named Michael. Once Michael V became emperor, he promptly exiled Zoe. This sparked a popular revolt which dethroned him and installed Zoe and her sister Theodora as joint empresses. After a two-month joint reign Zoe married a former lover, who was installed as Constantine IX Monomachos, transferring power to him. Eight years later, Zoe died aged 72. <laughs> Early life, c. 978-1028 Zoe was Porphyrogenita, born into the purple. This was the appellation for a child born in the capital to a reigning emperor. She was the second daughter of Constantine VIII and his wife Helena. Her father became co-emperor, at the age of two, in 962 and sole emperor in 1025. His reign as sole emperor lasted less than three years, from 15 December 1025 to 15 November 1028. As an eligible imperial princess Zoe was considered a possible bride for the Holy Roman Emperor, Otto III, in 996. A second embassy sent in 1001, headed by Arnulf, Archbishop of Milan, was tasked with selecting Otto's bride from among Constantine's three daughters. The eldest, Eudocha, was disfigured by smallpox, while the youngest, Theodora, was a very plain girl. Arnulf therefore selected the attractive 23-year-old Zoe, to which her uncle Basil II agreed. In January 1002 she accompanied Arnulf back to Italy, only to discover when the ship reached Bari that Otto had died, forcing her to return home. Another opportunity arose in 1028, when an embassy from the Holy Roman Empire arrived in Constantinople with a proposal for an imperial marriage. Constantine VIII and Zoe rejected the idea out of hand when it was revealed that the intended groom, Henry, the son of Conrad II, was only ten years old. Basil II prevented his nieces from marrying any of the Byzantine nobility, as this would have given their husbands a claim on the imperial throne. As women they were unable to exercise any state authority, their only say in this was in choosing, or more likely accepting or not, a husband who would acquire their authority upon marriage. Consequently, Zoe lived a life of virtual obscurity in the imperial gynecium women's quarters for many years. When Basil II died childless in 1025, her 65-year-old father became sole emperor. As he had no sons, Zoe and her surviving sister, Theodora, were forced into the center of imperial politics. Constantine determined that the ruling house would be continued by one of them being married to an appropriate aristocrat. The first potential match was the distinguished noble Constantine Dallasinos, the former Dukes of Antioch. The emperor's advisors preferred a weak ruler whom they could control and they persuaded him to reject Dallasinos after he had already been summoned to the capital. Romanos Argyros, the urban prefect of Constantinople, was the next to be considered as a match. Theodora defied her father by refusing to marry Romanos, arguing that he was already married, his wife having been forced to become a nun to allow Romanos to marry into the imperial family, and that as third cousins they had too close a blood relationship for marriage to occur. Consequently, Constantine VIII chose Zoe to be Romanos's wife instead of Theodora. Zoe and Romanos married on 10 November 1028 in the imperial chapel of the palace. Three days later Constantine died and the newlyweds were seated on the imperial throne. <laughs> From Romanos III to Michael V, 1028-1042 
Spending years in the same restrictive quarters with her sister, Zoe had come to loathe Theodora. Zoe convinced Romanos to appoint one of his own men as the chief of Theodora's household, with orders to spy on her. Shortly afterwards, Theodora was accused of plotting to usurp the throne, first with Prisian of Bulgaria in 1030, followed by Constantine Diogenes, the Archon of Sirmium, in 1031. Zoe accused her of being part of the conspiracy, and Theodora was forcibly confined in the monastery of Petrion. Zoe later visited her sister and forced her to take religious vows. Zoe was obsessed with continuing the Macedonian dynasty. Almost immediately upon marrying Romanos, the 50 year old Zoe tried desperately to become pregnant. She used magic charms, amulets, and potions, all without effect. This failure to conceive helped alienate the couple, and soon Romanos refused to share the marriage bed with her. Romanos limited his wife's spending and paid her little attention. Zoe, furious and frustrated, engaged in a number of affairs. Romanos tolerated these and took a mistress himself. In 1033 Zoe became enamored of a low-born servant called Michael. She flaunted her lover openly and spoke about making him emperor. Hearing the rumors, Romanos was concerned and confronted Michael, but he denied the accusations. In early 1034 Romanos became ill and it was widely believed that Zoe and Michael were conspiring to have him poisoned. On the 11th of April Romanos was found dying in his bath. According to court official and later chronicler Michael P. Sellis some of his retinue had held his head for a long time beneath the water, attempting at the same time to strangle him. John Silitz's writes as a simple fact that Romanos was drowned on Michael's orders. Matthew of Edessa's account has Zoe poisoning Romanos. Zoe and Michael were married on the same day that Romanos III died. The next day they summoned the patriarch Alexios I to officiate at the coronation of the new emperor. Although he initially refused to cooperate, the payment of 50 pounds of gold helped change his mind. He proceeded to crown Michael as the new emperor of the Romans, to reign as Michael IV until his death in 1041. Although Zoe believed Michael would prove to be a more devoted husband than Romanos, she was mistaken. Michael IV was concerned about Zoe turning on him the way she had turned on Romanos, so he excluded Zoe from politics by placing all power in the hands of his brother, the eunuch John the Orphanotrophus. Zoe was confined again to the palace gynoceum, and kept under strict surveillance. The disgruntled empress conspired against John but in vain, by 1041 it was obvious that Michael IV was dying. John the eunuch, eager to ensure that power remained in his hands, forced Zoe to adopt Michael IV's nephew, the son of his sister, also called Michael. On 10 December 1041, Michael IV died, refusing to the last to see his wife who begged that she be allowed to visit him one more time, and Michael V was crowned emperor. Although he had pledged to respect Zoe, Michael V promptly banished her to a monastery on Principis, an island in the Sea of Marmara, on charges of attempted regicide. She was forcibly tonsured and sworn into a religious order. This treatment of the legitimate heir to the Macedonian dynasty caused a popular uprising in Constantinople. Michael V, desperate to keep his throne, brought Zoe back from Principis and displayed her to the people, but his insistence that he continue to rule alongside her was in vain. On 19 April 1042 the mob dethroned Michael V in support of not only Zoe, but also Theodora. A delegation headed by patrician Constantine Cabasilas went to the monastery at Petrion to convince Theodora to become co-empress alongside her sister. Accustomed to a life of religious contemplation Theodora rejected them and sought sanctuary in the convent chapel. In the event she was carried forcibly back to the capital. At an assembly in Hagia Sophia the people escorted a furious Theodora and proclaimed her empress along with Zoe. After crowning the two empresses the mob stormed the palace, forcing Michael V to escape to a monastery. <inaudible> <inaudible> Ruling with Theodora and Constantine IX, 1042–1050 Zoe immediately assumed power and tried to force Theodora back to her monastery, but the Senate and the people demanded that the sisters should jointly reign. As her first act Theodora was called upon to deal with Michael V. Zoe, weak and easily manipulated, wanted to pardon and free Michael, but Theodora was clear and adamant. She initially guaranteed Michael's safety, but then ordered him to be blinded and to spend the rest of his life as a monk. Officially Zoe was the senior empress, and her throne was situated slightly in front of Theodora's on all public occasions. 
In practice Theodora was the driving force behind the joint administration. The sisters proceeded to administer the empire, focusing on curbing the sale of public offices and on the administration of justice. Although contemporary historian Michael P. Sellis claimed the joint reign was a complete failure, John Silitzes stated that they were very conscientious in rectifying the abuses of the previous reigns. Theodora and Zoe appeared together at meetings of the Senate and gave public audiences, but it was soon apparent that their joint reign was under strain. Zoe was still jealous of Theodora and had no desire to administer the empire, but she would not allow Theodora to conduct public business alone. The court began to split, with factions forming behind each empress. After two months of increasing acrimony, Zoe decided to search for a new husband, thereby denying Theodora the opportunity to increase her influence. By the rules of the Orthodox Church her next marriage, her third, was the last she was permitted. Her preference was for Constantine Dallasinos, who had been her father's first choice as her husband back in 1028. He was brought for an audience before the empress, but during their conversation his independent and forceful manner displeased Zoe, and he was dismissed from her presence. Her next choice was the married Constantine Atraclines, a court official with whom it was rumored that she had had an affair during the reign of Romanos III. He died under mysterious circumstances a few days before the wedding was to take place, possibly poisoned by his own soon-to-be ex-wife. Zoe then remembered the handsome and urbane Constantine Monomachos, another former lover. The pair were married on the 11th of June 1042, without the participation of Patriarch Alexis, who refused to officiate over a third marriage for both spouses. On the following day Constantine was formally proclaimed emperor together with Zoe and Theodora. Zoe got more than she bargained for when Constantine decided to bring with him to his new station his long-standing mistress Maria Skorena. Not content with bringing her to court, he insisted that he be allowed to publicly share his life with her, and that she obtain some official recognition. The 64-year-old Zoe did not object to sharing her bed and her throne with Skorena. Skorena was given the title of Sebaste, ranking behind Zoe and Theodora, and was addressed as mistress or empress, like them. At official events Skorena took position immediately behind the sisters. In the eyes of the public however, Constantine IX's preferential treatment of Skorena was a scandal, and eventually rumors began to spread that Skorena was planning to murder Zoe, and possibly Theodora. This led to a popular uprising by the citizens of Constantinople in 1044, which came dangerously close to actually harming Constantine who was participating in a religious procession along the streets of Constantinople. The mob was only quieted by the appearance on a balcony of Zoe and Theodora, who reassured the people that they were not in any danger of assassination. During Constantine's reign, Zoe handed over all imperial power and responsibility to him. It is said that Zoe was stunningly beautiful, and Michael Picellos in his Chronographia commented that, "...every part of her was firm and in good condition." Zoe recognized her own beauty and its use as a tool of statecraft. Attempting to maximize and prolong its effect she had a variety of creams and treatments prepared in the gynoceum, and was said to have carried out experiments attempting to improve their efficacy. She operated a cosmetics laboratory in her rooms in the palace, where perfumes and unguents were constantly being prepared. P. Celis reports that her face looked youthful into her sixties. Zoe died on the 11th of June 1050 aged 72. Topic. See also List of Byzantine emperors